call this regular meeting to order. We get started tonight. I'd like you all to stand and please uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance with us. Started tonight, we're going to have the swearing in of our two new commissioners, Mark McCransky and Michael Hall, and I'll let the feet go point center. We'll, we'll, we'll start with Mike, okay? <laughs> okay, Mike. Repeat after me. I'm Michael McCall. I'm Michael McCall. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the ordinances, ordinances of the City of Princeton. And the ordinances of the City of Princeton. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of Member of the City Council. Of the Office of Member of the City Council. Of the City of Princeton, Illinois. The City of Princeton, Illinois. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, Martin, raise your hand. Repeat after me. I am Martin McCransky. Martin McCransky. Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the, Illinois. And the ordinances of the City of Princeton. And, the of the City of Princeton. and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of the City Council. Of the City of Princeton, Illinois. Of the City of Princeton, Illinois. To the best of my ability. Congratulations. seated we will uh, call roll. All right, Mayor Quero. Here. Councilmember Newman. Here. Gomez. Here. McCransky. Here. McCall. Here. And I'll go to uh, first order of business is to pass a uh, considered ordinance for passage and go over to City Council Member Newman. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve a suspension of the requirement for a second reading of Ordinance 0 201 013. I second. Motion has been second. Uh, call roll. Council members Newman? Yes. Gomez? Yes. McCransky? Yes. McCall? Yes. Mayor Quirum? Yes. Okay, so next order. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and. Uh, next order of business is to. The ordinance. All right, I move that we approve Ordinance 0 21 013 establishing a public participation policy. I second. Motion has been second. Comments? Call roll. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Okay, so uh, tonight we're going to have uh, a discussion or a public comment, actually, a public comment period. We're going to listen uh, and hear what uh, everyone has to say. Um, I think there's still a misconception in the community that the city is trying to ban food trucks or we don't want them in Princeton, and that is not true. Uh, the city is fully behind food trucks. We have been from the beginning, and there has never once been a time when we have said that we were against food trucks. So if you're here to speak in favor of food trucks for being in the city of Princeton, that's all fine and well, but we're all on the same page. So. Um, that's what you're here to speak for. It'd be nice if maybe you didn't, so we could save each other a lot of time tonight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open the public comment period, and uh, whoever wants to jump up first, uh, go ahead. All you have to do is state your name and speak. Hey, I'm Pete Gardner. I live down on Thompson Street. 
Hello, everybody. I'm in. I'm bored of food trucks. We got a problem with the food trucks coming in. Maybe we should change some menus in time. That's all I got to say. Uh, the North End. Did anybody go through the historical society or whatever when those buildings were changed up on the North End? What do you mean changed up? Hmm? What do you mean? What do you mean changed up? The, well, that's a historic section, right? Didn't somebody just pay over three hundred thousand for the for the Clark House? And then Knox Hotel. Yeah. I don't I don't know what they paid, but it is yeah, recent. Well, they paid a lot of money for it. Let's just say. And then you go down a block and a half, and they've changed two buildings to look very modern. I just wonder, you know, there's a there's a group supposed to be monitoring that in there. Well, that's true. The uh, uptown, downtown business districts are a national list of historic places. Uh, but the building owners can do what they want with the buildings. Yeah, and if, they have, if the building owner wants to look into what they can do to uh, renovate the buildings with historic beginnings, you know, they can contact the Grove County Historical Society and uh, or the city to get the you know the avenue to go there. There's tax credits available for that kind of thing, but it's up to the uh, it's up to the building owners. They, they can change it any way they want to. They sure can. Well, uh, we encourage, you know, to uh, renovate buildings, but I mean, again, yeah, it's, it's, I imagine. it's their building, so. I imagine. But uh, some people change their minds. So. Uh, Thompson Street, thank you for getting it paid. I'm really knocking a lot of pain off my truck, so thank you. Yep, I'm talking about the West End, yeah. not the East End. Okay. Uh, I would like to make one suggestion for it, if I could. Could we get some speed bumps put in it, just between church and main? And I'll nominate my place for it. You know, uh, people come around those corners just screaming, and nobody seems to be down about it. Yeah, I live in Thompson too, so I know what you're, uh, mm -hmm. what you're talking about. So. You drive around town, you see these little orange signs holding a flag and slow down. There's four of them right there on, on South Church, right around the corner from me. Somebody's got to start holding these people down. I don't know, you know, speed bumps would do it. I know I did it over in season. Uh, the burn ban? No, keep it. I told you the story about my neighbor with the big dog all winter. In the summer, he goes out, breaks it all in the pile, and burns it. We don't need that in town. People with asthma and breathing conditions Who knows what's laying out there now with this stuff out there. So no, keep the burn ban. Two months, one in the spring, one in the fall. That would be fine. Are we gonna do anything about the ATVs running around in town? Well, if we see them out running about, the police will see them, they'll, they will uh, they will address it. They'll pull them over. But uh, you know, we've got what two or three on patrol at any given time throughout the entire city. So you know, if we don't, uh, we're not in the vicinity where they are. It's kind of it's kind of difficult to unless somebody calls them in and we can get somebody over there wherever they are. How many officers do we have? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Well, I, I think uh, when I read the paper and I see where the sheriff is picking people up all the time, very rarely do I see any speeders in Princeton getting picked up. And it's getting to be a big problem. You come off of Thompson Street and look down toward Discalot, you better be paying real close attention because they're coming up there real fast. I used to have a telephone pole that I looked at. I go back three more telephone poles now just to make sure that I make it out there before they come to me. So they're booking. Could we get a uh, recycling for electronics and a hazmat? Uh, well, Republic is handling that now, and they usually are doing like one a year in the fall. Yeah, they did one last fall, they'll have another one this fall, I'm sure. Well, I see they're having them in other counties, so. That's the I don't want to start seeing all this stuff in the ditches, you know. <coughs> That's where it ended up. So, thank you for the cleanup today. It was very nice. That's it. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, just like on the uh, on the issue with the uh, public comment uh, with the ordinance, we'd like to try to limit everybody if possible. You know, to three minutes. You know, if you, you know I hope everybody can get what they want to say out in three minutes' time. Um, the cumulative period for the public comment uh, speaking is 20 minutes, but with a large group of people, if a lot of people want to speak, obviously we will we will expand that time period. And uh, again, this is a public pe public comment period, and uh, um, you know the council uh, is not going to get into a you know a back and forth with the public during the public co comment. It's a public comment period, so that's what it's for, it's for the public to comment. So, uh, who's next? My name is John Lilly. Um, so the mayor mentioned that he supports food trucks, and as do I. And uh, so I'm wondering the the latest and greatest, of course, that I've heard the rumors of, are just that is that uh, the plan will be to move them to the ends of town. Now, if we're supporting food trucks, um, but not supporting them in front of the Braille Society, who has been the the key factor in. <coughs> bringing them to town and building a culture surrounding them. Uh, the fight doesn't seem to be against food trucks from the brick and mortars. It seems to be against Barrel Society. And I think the hard work that he put in during COVID and uh, trying to move his business forward while other people stayed stagnant, um, as a town we're trying to move forward. So mm -hmm. I hope you can keep that in mind. Thank you. proposed ordinance, ordinance where you said to only take up one spot and then it was from one section of the street all the way down to right before it hits the diagonal turn. I'm sorry, I don't know streets particularly. Um, I agree completely with that one, um, mostly because the second one that had come out to be parking across the street into the parking lot by Myrtle, um, people jaywalk already as it is. And I feel like it would be completely unsafe to have it over there, in my honest opinion, because then people would be jaywalking even more than they already do on a state highway. When it's right there in front of us, we can keep things a little more sheltered, things like that. And uh, the generator noise is also a fair concern, but we are working on that. Um, so that's really all I have to say. Uh, just I, I agree with the original proposed ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Nick Georgianis. I am the owner and proprietor of Barrel Society. Um, I would like to welcome anybody after this is all said and done. Uh, you can either approach me at the bar in person afterwards uh, for further comment questions. I try to be very transparent in everything that we do, uh, being as community focused and based as we are. I kind of want everybody to take a look at, at where we are, uh, Seth. The, the divide in the town is, is serious. And this issue has been going on for roughly six months now. Uh, I first spoke to the mayor about uh, reading, uh, receiving complaints from another business owner saying that the trucks that we contract to come to Barrel Society are interfering with their dinner hour service. This, however, is simply an illegitimate argument. This is simply jealousy and fear of competition. We live and operate in a free market society, and competition breeds creativity. Again, jealousy and fear of competition are not legitimate factors in this. And if an indiv individual or a group is craving uh, an indoor dining experience, them passing up a food truck at Barrel Society is not going to prohibit them from doing so, or even sway their opinion. 
Uh, however, with that said, and the lack of legitimacy in that uh, particular issue, there are real issues surrounding the food trucks that we at Barrel Society and as a community are willing to address. Uh, the first one being generator noise. Uh, Mindy from Milk Mustache actually approached me uh, very distraught last week um, for because of how, how drawn out and hostile this topic has become on Facebook particularly, um, but also came to me to discuss her concern as a business owner down in the North End over the generator noise. Um, I'm very, I was very pleased to inform her that we as a business uh, actually have one vendor that has already purchased a noiseless generator and began using it last weekend. It was excellent. Uh, and we as a business have been already in contact with multiple electrical contractors to, because we have an exterior outlet that we can change to, to basically suit the needs of a food truck. Um, so again, we're pleased to announce that the, the generator noise can soon be a non-issue. Parking. We understand and respect the uh, importance of parking in downtown business districts. And that's why we agree with the first ordinance proposal that mobile vendors uh, may only occupy one parallel parking spot on Main Street. Two-part vendors should have to detach their truck from the trailer and then park this truck or car, whatever it is towing it, in one of the many available surrounding public lots. Fees. We are also very supportive and understand the support in the increase of vendor fees, either on a yearly or per visit basis as well. I think a per visit, per visit basis is very fair, especially you know if they're operating in a uh, rapid capacity. If they're here once or twice a week, you know, charge them each time, and that way the city will reap those benefits as well. Um, these are all compromises that we're willing to make, and in a community we need compromise and communication. Uh, on the topic of communication, again, please don't hesitate to contact me or speak to me in person. I feel that many of us, if a, a lot of us had taken this approach six months ago, we wouldn't be in this tires, tiresome situation that we are currently in now. Uh, lastly, as we move forward and embrace mobile vendors in our community, we must expect backlash from, from any individual and even due to just a simple disagreement. However, we must listen to our community and support one another in Princeton's everlasting journey to progress. Thank you. Steve Kelly, and I would like a little extra time. I'm representing 15 businesses. Um, I, I've had the privilege and the honor to speak on their behalf. They've asked me to speak on their behalf, and I'm going to speak on their behalf to address this issue. First of all, I would like you to know who are these businesses? You want me to list them out? I'm just curious. The business from this town? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's 15 brick okay. and mortar from this town. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, that's fine. Just so you know, the individuals that have asked me to speak on their behalf tonight are 15 businesses and also one food truck. The people who have asked me to speak on their behalf tonight have had years of business in Princeton for 180, over 180 years. They employ over 130 employees, and that's not counting the subcontractors, the individuals that have come in to work on their buildings. The years of residency in, in Princeton, the people I speak on behalf, have over 425 years of residency in this town. The investments and the building improvements they've done to their buildings here on Main Street, it exceeds over $2.5 million. These individuals, these business owners, the brick and mortars, they bring tourism here. These individuals as a group donate to charities. These individuals and as a group have loyal followings. These individuals in this group pay real estate taxes, pay utilities, pay for garbage services, pay, pay sales tax. And I mentioned those items because those items were brought up at the last meeting. 
of things that people do for this community. They as a group do that. What we're here to talk about tonight is this ordinance. And, and Mayor, you said to us last two weeks ago, bring me an ordinance to get together, talk about it. And that's what we did. We met, and I met these individuals, I didn't know 90% of them until last week. And they're great people, hard workers, and they believe in this community. They want this community to succeed. Not one of them does not want success for this community. So we did that. We wrote up the ordinance. Can I approach and give the ordinance to the council? In the packet I gave you, there are two items. The first item is the ordinance that we generated to allow you to look at what our position is in this case. The second item is an Illinois Supreme Court case. This Illinois Supreme Court case was handed down in January 2021. LPM versus the City of Chicago. This case dealt with all the issues that are on the table for this community and all the issues that people have brought forward to you with their concerns. It was cupcake for a courage for cupcakes versus the city of Chicago. There was hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on this case. This case went to the Illinois Supreme Court and the issues that had been brought before you and the emotions that brought before you were addressed in this case. The Illinois Restaurant Association, who employs over 500,000 people, who bring 30, $30 million to the state of Illinois, supported the brick and mortar in this case. And in this case that you have, what happened was, the city of Chicago, not saying they don't want food trucks, decided they had to regulate it. And I think that's what we're saying here. We're not saying there's no room for food trucks, but it has to be regulated. And the analysis and the uh, issues involved with the attorneys in this case were brought to the court and what the Supreme Court, we're talking about seven justices, decided was the following. That the brick and mortar restaurants bring stability to the neighborhood. That they pay property taxes. That the brick and mortar have vested interests in seeing neighborhood grow and thrive so business can flow through the community. Long-term sense of cohesiveness that brick and mortar brings to the community cannot be ignored. Also, a brick and mortar establishes a permanent spot for tourists to, 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 to go to. And why that's important is this. The city of Chicago regulated the distance the food trucks could go to a brick and mortar food. It was 200 feet. And, and the Food Vendor Association fought it. The food vendors fought it. And the Illinois Supreme Court said, we're gonna give credence to the brick and mortar when they bring the community. We want a stable community. We want a stable city. And these justices agreed with that. They said 200 feet was reasonable. They said that the concerns of the brick and mortar were reasonable. And they found in favor of the brick and mortar. I certainly don't want this council in the city to walk down that same path. I hope we don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to go through what's already been done. The ordinance I presented to you I'll highlight some of the effects. We're asking for the 200 feet distance between a food vendor and a brick and mortar that serves food. We're asking for a limit of four hours on a permit for the food vendors with the day they use. Also, we're asking for it to be at the parks. That's it, at the parks. That's what we're asking for in our ordinance. Now, at the meeting we had, we had a food vendor there, and we listened to him. There was a concern about the ordinance was put out through social media, and the concern was allowing food vendors to have access to the place you're gonna allow them to have it. And we'd ask them to have a due, due process for that food vendor, so that the same truck is getting the same spot every time. 
some type of due process for that vendor. But you'll see in the ordinance that we presented as a group, and we all agreed upon, that that's how we feel about this issue. It was hard to sit back two weeks ago, but we wanted to listen and take it in. And that's what a community builder does. These people are community builders. These people took time out of their day to meet with us and everybody to help you make a tough decision. And it's a tough decision. So I think everybody in this room wants Princeton to be a success. There's no doubt about that. But that's not done by decisiveness. That's not done by name calling. That's not done by saying try harder. That's not how you build a community. You build a community by giving good service and working together on issues like this. And we're not going anywhere. We've invested too much in this community. These individuals I'm proud of, they're hard workers, and I'm proud that they asked, they asked me to speak on their behalf. We would ask you to look at our ordinance very seriously. We would ask you to look at the Supreme Court case very seriously. And we'd ask you to adopt our proposed ordinance. Just one, one clarification. This is basically our ordinance with these three changes. There, yes, we, what I did is I took your ordinance, put it in PDF, mm -hmm. and we agreed. We went through, we went through every section, and we we agreed with the majority of what your ordinance said. But when you use common sense and you look at the case law, you look at concerns and the investment of this group, we feel far outweighs the sections we changed far outweigh to let it just stay the way it was. Our concerns were talked about earlier. Safety, noise, taking up parking spots. And thankfully, the north side is getting more business. Not just brick and mortar restaurants, more business is coming. And you've gotta be concerned about spaces for parking. And the distance from the park isn't that far from where these businesses are at. It just makes sense. And the Supreme Court agreed, and we ask you to adopt our our proposal. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joshua Hellerum. Um, fairly new to Princeton. Uh, I just want to say, if the changes that Nick mentioned are implemented. I don't really see reason that they can't be parked in front of Barrel Society if the noise in the park one parking spot. I just want to say, like, I've only been to Barrel Society once and the food truck once. I go to the brick and mortar stores all the time. And when I recommend places, I recommend Barrel Society and Park Tavern, who I live right across the street from, go there every Monday for chicken. It's delicious. I just want to say, I don't see there's shouldn't be a reason not to have what Barrel Society needs and brick and mortar stores need, and I don't think they need to be moved to the park. Thank you. Josh, how do you spell your last name? Hellrung. H-E-L-L-R-U-N-G. One more time slowly. Sorry. H-E-L-L-R-U-N-G. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks.
So it is something that he has stated he is already working on. Um, as for location, keeping them central keeps them in the heart of Princeton. Um, they are able to walk around and explore the many shops in the area afterwards and before. As stated, um, as I've been sitting in line, people have said, oh, let's check out this shop, let's go over here. I think that it's a good thing to bring in people into that area. Um, it becomes an attraction to all the things that make Princeton great, and it offers us as Princetonians a fresh new thing each entire week as we bring the food truck in. Food trucks have been a way for our local businesses to adapt and to join together to lift each other up, something Nick is very passionate about. As seen by his collaborations with Flower House, Blue Jay Way Workers, Piazza, Paisano, local breweries, and even local woodworkers, Elise Swimford and Ken Newcomb. I look around and see so many familiar faces. It is because of that sense of community Nick has built around his little building. And community is all that matters in times like these. I say let them continue to bring more growth to Princeton and let them continue to lure in more crowds to see what our little city is all about. And let them do so proudly in the main streets of Princeton. Thank you. And was it Natalie Gibson? Yes, correct. Um, and it's Natalie with CP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, you want my name? Yeah, sure. Okay, it's uh, Chris Nesbitt, N E S B I T T. Alright. Okay. How you doing? Okay. Um, so I just wanted to uh, come and, and, and just, I've lived in Princeton maybe like 10 years now. Um, it's a wonderful community. I like it a lot. Okay, a good small town. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, in support of uh, having food trucks in town, I know you are, I guess, I'm just saying, I, I, I'm for it. So if, with that kind of sentiment, I just want to uh, uh, mention that, you know, it's not a zero-sum argument, I don't think, that, that uh, it's not to say more food trucks is going to be less business for any business in particular in town. I mean, I've lived here 10 years, I'm not from here, but, uh, you know, I've seen the businesses come and go, and, and I don't think that a food truck will really affect that as far as making them go. So I think, again, more more business in our town is going to bring more business for everybody, I think, you know? Uh, I, I disagree with uh, some of the some of what we've heard maybe tonight as far as uh, kind of restraining Princeton in the same way you would restrain, you know, Chicago businesses with, with you know, Chicago-style ordinances. You know, I don't, I don't think that it's fair to to restrain the businesses in Princeton, any business in Princeton, um, based off of what they did for big city Chicago. Okay, I mean, that's just where I stand. Um, and then um, I, I think that telling food trucks that they can't operate in our populated, uh, popular areas, both on the south side and the north side, or if, if for some reason somebody wants to open up a business up there by the gas stations and all that jive, what, you know, a food truck should be able to go there too within, as long as they're within the ordinances. I don't think that we should restrict them to one necessary part of town or not. You know, I don't think that's fair to the businesses on the north side, east side, west side, south side, whatever side. Uh, just saying, and then I, I know I'm taking, I'm taking a lot of time. Um, I think that a nice solution to where the Barrel Society is, because that area seems to be getting a lot of traffic in general, uh, just kind of away from food trucks, is maybe if we put like a, some, some another crosswalk somewhere nearby. I was there with my son, and I got to hold his hand. He's little, and uh, it was hard for us to get across the street just to go to um, not the Myrtles place, but the the place on the same side of the street there. You know, uh, you know, it's just hard to cross the street there, and and, and it's hard for traffic to see. So another crosswalk, you know, I mean, what hurt? It'll slow people down anyway. So I think it'll solve a lot of problems. You know. Uh, that's all I got to say. I was really nervous. Thanks, Scott. And, uh, appreciate, you. <laughs> yeah. appreciate you opening it up to the community, though. That, that means a lot to us. So, thanks. You did well. Thank you. All right. the delightful pleasure and privilege to work for a lot of businesses in Princeton. 
not because I don't know how to keep still, but I don't know how to not work. Um, I have had the pleasure of working in Flower House where I get the pulse of all the things. I have worked for Nick as um, an artisan, and he trusted me and invested in me as a small proprietor of a tiny little business. Um, and I work for Horror Bigger Gardens and I see a ton of tourists out there. I have just a tiny little story, but almost every weekend that I work at Flower House, I have somebody I've never seen in any way, and that's like happens in Flower House all the time, but they're coming for Feral Society. I see a couple every weekend from Quad Cities that come and bring our city. Uh, they're commerce. And they're coming not only for the experience that Nick has created in, in his building and his camaraderie, you met him, he's very friendly. And I don't have to do his accolades here, everybody's heard that at this point. Um, but because of that community and how he sold Princeton, he's not selling Barrel Society, he's selling Princeton. Um, and putting a food truck in that one little parking spot, I don't think it's gonna really hurt any other businesses especially since he is speaking so highly of everyone else in his community. Unfortunately, this has brought out a little bit of tension in that district, um, and everybody loves our town, so it makes sense that there would be some hard feelings. Um, but, you know, that's, I guess, my two cents there, is I have a really nice perspective of who's coming and who's going and what people are saying, and mostly it's only positive from outsiders about that experience there. Thank you very much. Hi there, my name is Allie Krug. I live off Pine Street. Um, I'm originally from the suburbs. I've been out here 14 years. And there are a lot of people coming from out of town to visit Princeton. And what's drawing them in is what's happening at Barrel Society and Business in Stone at that end. There's a lot of excitement. People are excited to come to Princeton. They want to see what's going on. And Nick is only trying to draw in positive. I have been very impressed with the things that Nick has offered at Barrel Society and has offered to our community. It is not about him. It is about doing best for Princeton and what is best for Princeton. Nothing is about him or for himself. I think we've seen that over and over. He's constantly giving back. I think the food truck thing is a great idea. It takes a couple spots, I understand that. But I think it's drawing in people, not just from Princeton. You talk to anybody in line or outside of this business, they're from Peru, they're from wherever in this area. Some people are coming from Peoria. I think it's doing a great free, like a great thing for Princeton. Thank you. Ellie, how do you spell your first name? A-L-I. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anyone else? Too greatly affect the other 
business is around them. So yes, there probably needs to be some regulation, but we need to take into consideration the needs of everybody. And having that food truck taking one spot right across from the business, I don't think harms any other business around. Thank you. stability of the community is very important. Chicago can lose a street, a line of businesses, and continue. I'm not sure that we can. We don't want to lose our brick and mortar. We don't want to water down our brick and mortar. And that's what that case talked about, the importance of these businesses. And the safety issues, think about it. You as a council, you as a mayor, don't want to create a dangerous situation. We all know there's been complaints. And just by working on it, doesn't release you from liability. If you create a hazard, you're responsible for it. So you got a lot on your plate, a lot to think about, not just about business, but also about exposure. Thank you. Steve, real quick, this, uh, I, I'm familiar with this uh, Illinois State case. I've, I've seen this um, Supreme Court case. This came down the Supreme Court, so it rules the entire state. Correct. So, so the, the more interesting about that case, not jazz. Chicago put GPSs on the food trucks. That's how concerned they were about watering down the destabilization of the community, the business. That case allowed GPSs to be put on food trucks. Think about that. So it was that important to them. There was a lot of money spent on that case. A lot of attorney, attorneys, a lot of fees. Restaurant Association, Mobile Vendor Association, and every court heard it and unanimously each justice said and found in favor of the brick and mortar. Thank you. Anyone else? Going once. Going twice. Anybody in the room wants to come in? No? Okay, so I will go ahead and close this public comment period, and uh, we do have a public comment period at the end of the meeting as well, so you guys will have another opportunity to speak to play. So we'll move on and uh, approval of minutes to Commissioner Newman. And uh, before that, if anybody would like to leave, you can. Give you a, we always give that opportunity. But, uh, we don't encourage anybody to leave. We never encourage anybody to leave a meeting. <coughs> You all for the opportunity. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. I move on the approval of from our regular council meeting on April 19th, 2021. Second. Motion has been second. Comments? Oral. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. 
Kransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. And we'll go to approval of invoices and city court notes. In the Department of Accounts, uh, over. In the Department of Accounts and Finances, uh, we have invoices this period totaling forty thousand five hundred eight dollars and fifty five cents. In the Department of Streets and Public Improvements, we have invoices totaling three hundred ten thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars and fifty three cents. In the Department of Public Safety, we have invoices totaling five hundred one thousand seven hundred seventy dollars and eighty cents. And in the Department of Public Property and Utilities. We have invoices totaling $654,199.45. There are all council members present have confirmed their reviews of all invoices and now are submitted for disposition. I move that we approve the ordinances as presented, or the invoices as presented, excuse me. Second. Motion to second. Comments? Hello? Council Member Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum. Aye. I'll go to regular business and city court Nelson. Next on the agenda is a resolution R-21-013. This is a resolution appropriating $155,000 in motor fuel tax funds for annual street maintenance. Mayor, all council members have reviewed this uh, resolution and it is submitted for disposition. I move that we approve resolution R-21-013. Second. Motion's been second. Teresa, you have anything? Um, I'll go ahead and speak on both of these resolutions. Well, I'll just do the first one first. Um, motor fuel taxes, uh, I don't want to confuse everybody. We get different allotments for motor fuel tax. Um, this one is just standard paperwork that we have to do each year in order to spend the motor fuel tax with IDOT. So we'll pass this and then IDOT approves it and we can spend the money. So it's, it's a paperwork process. Any comments? Or roll. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Next on the agenda is resolution R-21-014. This is a resolution appropriating $242,000 in Build Illinois funds for annual street maintenance. Mayor, all council members have reviewed this uh, resolution and it is submitted for disposition. I move that we approve resolution R-21-014. Second. Motion has been second. Uh, uh, what I was going to say earlier is that uh, this allotment of the motor fuel is an extra allotment that we've, we've started to get. So even though it's all motor fuel, we have to still spend it separately per se. Um, but this is all a part of the big package for the street projects that we have scheduled for the summer. Last summer, you probably remember everything being tore up and the streets being constructed. Uh, Quint has a very busy summer coming up because we have the motor fuel funds, but also the sales tax funds going towards the street project. So, very big summer coming up. And I'd, I'd like to add that we, uh, prior to passing our sales tax referendum uh, last year uh, for street work, we usually would put about 150. We were lucky to put $150,000 a year into our streets in its entirety. Since we passed that sales tax along with the motor fuel tax. Last year we put over $800,000 in our streets. We're going to do that again this year and we'll be able to do that in the years ahead. So the streets in this town are going to be transformed in short order. <laughs> 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 uh, any comments? Coral? Council Member Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Next on the agenda is resolution R-21-015. This is a resolution authorizing partial liquidation of a CD and establishing signatories for that CD. There, all council members have reviewed this uh, resolution and it is submitted for disposition. I move that we approve resolution R-21-015. Second. Motion has been second. Comments? Teresa? Uh, just a little background on what is happening here is there's a CD for um, the Lovejoy Homestead and this year being the big year that it is, uh, there's some big maintenance uh, projects out there, one of them being the repainting of the building in its entirety. So we're going to use some of those funds from that CD to help offset those costs because the majority of the, the um, Lovejoy Homestead is actually funded by the city. So we need to help offset some of that cost. So go out and see it this year, it's a big year. Motion has been second. Uh, comments? Oral? Council Member Newman? Aye. 
Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Sokransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Clarem? Aye. Thank you, Pete. Now those city manager reports. Uh, in your packet, you have the police pension report for March of 2021. Last uh, meeting, we had the fire, but we didn't have the police, so that is included in your packet. Um, one other thing I do want to mention, because I forgot to bring it up last meeting, is uh, the downstate stabilization uh, grants that I applied for for five of the businesses in Princeton, two of them were approved by the state, but it's been about a year process. Um, it's been drawn out ridiculously long, but I was happy to uh, take the two $25,000 checks for a total of 50 to the two businesses uh, a couple weeks ago. Bruce Jewelers and Jillian both received those checks. So they're very grateful. Um, it's great to be able to at least give something back during these times to those businesses. And I applaud them for sticking with it because it was quite the process. <laughs> Good news. Uh, thank you, Teresa. So now we, uh, we've got a couple of board appointments with Commissioner Dean. I'm going to be appointed the board of directors of Prairie Memorial Hospital. Linda Gustafson and Dennis Thompson, both for terms ending uh, April 30th, 2026, or other, otherwise governed by the City of Princeton OSF Healthcare Affiliation Agreement. This is, uh, frankly, we have two uh, members of the hospital board whose terms expired uh, a couple of days ago. And since the hospital is in transition from uh, the City of Princeton to OSF Healthcare, we need those two folks to remain on the board for these last two or three months until this transaction is completed. So that's what we're doing. Second. Motion has been second. I would add that uh, the transition from uh, Perry Moore Hospital to OSF St. Clair Medical Center is to occur uh, July 1st. So right around the corner. Any comments? Paul Roll. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Clear. Mm -hmm. Aye. Uh, just a couple more things, just to follow up on some of the comments that I heard. Um, the uh, food trucks uh, are also allowed to set up in the business districts in the city of Princeton on the private property of businesses with the agreement between the food vendor and the business. So um, I just wanted to touch on that because I don't know if everyone knows that. Um, the everyone knows that. Um, the traffic uptown. Uh, up in the north end, uh, IDOT studies show that 13,000 vehicles travel our North Main Street district every day. Uh, so when you talk about putting a crosswalk in there, that sounds like a great idea. Unfortunately, it's a state route, and it intersects with the state route at Elm. And you have an intersection there, and it's a light intersection. Again, there are two intersecting state routes. Uh, to put a crosswalk uh, where you're suggesting most likely will be denied by IDOT. That's there right away, and it would be their decision. It's too close to the intersection, and you got way too much traffic there. You, you never, never see a crosswalk there. I don't think. Uh, not that we can't ask, but uh, I just I don't think that's going to happen. Um, also, I'd just like to, to mention a little thing on the, uh, you know, everybody appreciates everything that uh, is going on in town. That you know, for the last six years, our primary focus since I've been mayor, because it's been my primary focus, is hurt. You know, Princeton has sold Princeton. In the last six years, we've done a fabulous job of what we've done up and down Main Street. You know, the businesses that have come into town, the uh, the buildings that have been bought, the facades that have been renovated, the interiors that have been renovated, the boutiques that have opened, the shops, the stores, you know, the street concerts that we put on six times a year, uh, the commercials that we have been running in Quad Cities, that in large part is why people come to Princeton. They're seeing Princeton advertised in Quad Cities, and they've been seeing it for the last three or four years. You go into any boutique, and you ask them where you're seeing their customers from, they're going to tell you. Primarily, a lot of them are coming from the west, the western part of the state. Last year we started advertising in Peoria, and this year we're talking to WGN TV. We might start advertising sparingly, very expensive in Chicago, but we're looking at advertising up there to bring people down, you know, from the, especially from the southwest suburbs. So we have, we have been marketing. Our, our Chamber of Commerce, you know, before with Kim and now with Jenica, uh, you know, as well as our, uh, they're also act as our Princeton Tourism Directors have done an absolute fabulous job with all their, you know, promotions that they hold throughout the year, such as Spring Spring Flame or Spring Flame and others. You know, we do, uh, we've been marketing Princeton for six years. Princeton has grown 
leaps and bounds in the last six years. We've been bringing people to town consistently in the last six years. We were recently named by one publication as the third most uh, charming small town in the state of Illinois behind Galena and Woodstock. That's pretty heady, co heady company. And that is a result of what we've been doing for the last six years. So um, I, I get a little offended when I hear people say that, well, they don't say, they don't recognize what's been going on here in Princeton in the last six years. We, we've got a success story here and it's gonna continue. And businesses have come, they have opened up, they add to what we're doing. They add to the success that we've had with tourism and that will continue. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Um, so now we'll go to uh, any old business on council. This is when the city council gets to uh, old business, new business, when they get to speak, if they like to, on any old business. Any old business. <laughs> any new business? I'm not a council member, but can I say something? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the mic on. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it seems kind of relevant uh, with the audience that we have. I don't know if any of you are aware of it, but the state of Illinois released uh, and several million dollars in restaurant revitalization funds. The application starts today. I'm assuming that maybe you guys got notification of it, but if not, I would encourage you to go to the uh, Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity website and um, and check out the details of the uh, re revitalization funds that are available for different types of reasons, mostly for uh, those restaurants that have been hurt by COVID one way or another. So. Uh, Today, like, like I said, today is the first day of application. I think it goes for 21 days or something like that. But it's first come, first serve. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, new business? One more time. Okay, now we're back to public comment. So if anybody has public comment that they did not, it's something new from the first public comment. Just, yeah, just don't repeat the uh, old news. No, I would like to bring something up. If you're talking about bringing people in from the West, uh, I was told this weekend that after about $30 worth of chocolate bars, handed out to all the conductors for Amtrak's 50th anniversary, that uh, we're the only depot that's not open. And someone is deeply concerned about that. Never up idea at all. I think you ain't going to do it. Don't forget, he got your telephone number. I know. <laughs> he would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. I'd also like to say, uh, real quick, you know, as far as, uh, you know, continuing to progress Princeton, you know, we do have a depot committee that is meeting, and they are currently meeting, they have been meeting, at looking at renovating the depot campus. You know, um, you know, the putting a cul-de-sac in at the Amtrak station and, and repaving, well, actually not repaving, but paving, the uh, parking lot at the depot were the only Amtrak stop between Chicago and Quincy that does not have the paid parking lot. And we are looking to do that next year. So we are uh, we are definitely, without question, we continue to move, we continue to progress, and we'll continue to do so. So, any other public comment? Anybody from the other room? Oh, there, yeah, we like shut the lights <laughs> off. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and shut down the public comment and I will entertain a motion to adjourn and reconvene. Okay, Mayor. I uh, move that we adjourn our regular meeting this evening and reconvene for our next regular council meeting on Monday, May 17th, 2021, 7 o'clock at City Hall. Second. Motion is to second. Call roll. Councilmember Newman? Aye. Gomez? Aye. McCransky? Aye. McCall? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. This meeting is an adjourned. Again, thank you all for coming. It's great to see such a great turnout, a good discussion. Both sides, really appreciate it. I'd like to see this every two weeks. Thank you. I've seen you on your porch a few times. I've seen you on your porch a few times. I'm not as tall Yeah. Yeah, right? Marty?